The history of Doctor Who has always been widely debated, and with last year's series shedding more light than anticipated on their previous and future incarnations, it has been debated more than ever. Recently, the most discussed lives of the Doctor has been the pre-TV incarnations, those who came before William Hartnell was the first Doctor. Even the future incarnations are being discussed more often than ever with the rumours of Jodie Whittaker leaving the show soon. But there's a particular period in the Doctor's life that remains undiscovered, and that is the period between the 8th and the 9th Doctor, the mystery that surrounded the show from 1996 till 2005. So today I will break down each individual timeline and uncover the history of the 9th Doctor. <laughs> Our journey starts in 1996 when after many years of trying to launch an American produced series of Doctor Who, Philip Segal penned Doctor Who the movie, in which Paul McGann played the 8th Doctor. The movie shows Sylvester McCoy as the 7th Doctor regenerate into Paul McGann as the 8th. Unfortunately, this was Paul McGann's only on-screen appearance as the 8th Doctor. At the end of the movie, we see the Doctor depart from San Francisco to continue his adventure throughout time and space. It is unknown exactly what happened to the 8th Doctor after the TV movie. For the casual audience, Doctor Who didn't make a comeback to our TV screens until 2005 when Christopher Eccleston was cast as the new Doctor with no explanation of a regeneration or end to the 8th incarnation. So what had happened in the past 9 years? When did McGann's run as the Doctor end and Eccleston start? In series 1 of the show, it was established that the Time War was the reason for the 8th Doctor's regeneration into the 9th, but this was still never shown, and the mystery remained. It was only until 2013 when the 50th anniversary rolled around that we were given an actual explanation as to how the 8th Doctor regenerated into the 9th, and the short answer is that he didn't. The mini-episode Night of the Doctor gives an exposition into the 8th Doctor's regeneration, revealing in fact that he did not regenerate into the 9th Doctor, but instead regenerated into what had been known as the War Doctor. This incarnation was portrayed by the late John Hurt in the episodes The Name of the Doctor and The Day of the Doctor. He fought in the Time War rather than the 8th Doctor, and regenerated at the end of it which can be seen in the episode Day of the Doctor. So there it is, that's the history of the 9th Doctor. Except it isn't. You're all probably a bit confused right now and I don't blame you, but there is so much more uncovered mystery centred around the 9th incarnation of the Doctor. I think I should probably mention a specific word here, and I will give a warning to anybody who is prone to starting internet frenzies on mention of this word that end up in the ceremonial burning of the brain of Morbius DVD, but the word is canon. Now before you all start disliking this video and telling me my various opinions are incorrect, canon is entirely subjective. It is up to you what you want to be canon. Hell, you can even consider little silly adventures like Devious as canon. I know I do. But everything that I continue to talk about for the rest of the video is my own personal canon. It is up to you to decide if you want to agree with me. I would also like to mention that this video will contain spoilers for the following stories, so you can skip their respective segments if you wish. I'll leave time codes in the description. The first variation of the Ninth Doctor's incarnation is technically not an actual Doctor. Allow me to explain. During the 8th Doctor's glorious reign in the DWM comic universe, the production team suggested the idea of a fake regeneration to test the waters if they were to introduce a new Doctor into the comics. Therefore, the Wormwood Doctor was introduced. During the events of the comic story The Final Chapter, the 8th Doctor sacrificed himself or saved from Gallifrey and therefore regenerated into the then 9th Doctor. This incarnation of the Doctor's likeness was based off of the ubiquitous Nicholas Briggs. This incarnation was also foreshadowed in the 1991 comic Party Animals as a future incarnation. This incarnation could also potentially be linked to other variations of the Doctor that Briggs had played, such as the Teapot Doctor. However, in the following story, Wormwood, it was revealed that this incarnation of the Doctor was not a real Doctor, but his old friend Shade was using a personal chameleon circuit to hide their figure, and this regeneration was in fact a projection. So it's quite difficult where to place the Wormwood Doctor on the timeline. He wasn't an official regeneration, but it's still part of the comic canon, and depending on if you consider the comics canon or not, he is a version of the Ninth Doctor. Personally, I'm adding him to the timeline because I believe the comics to be canon, despite the overlap on Master Timelines, but that's for a whole other video. Now, we've also got to take into consideration alternate timelines and parallel universes. They've been thoroughly explored within the series, and it's not too far off to assume that there are alternate versions of the Ninth Doctor. The first alternation I would like to talk about is the Schalke Doctor, as portrayed by Richard E. Grant. In the early 2000s, BBC I commissioned a six-part Doctor Who adventure called Scream of the Schalke that was animated by Cosgrove Hall, the same company that animated The Invasion in 2008. The episode featured Richard E. Grant as the official Ninth Doctor until this incarnation was retconned by the return of Doctor Who in 2005 with Christopher Eccleston as the then official Ninth Doctor, hence why I have archived this in an alternative timeline. It has since officially been stated in the BBC novel The Tomorrow Window that this was a future alternate version of the Ninth Doctor. 
It is unknown, however, exactly how the Eighth Doctor regenerated into the Schalke Doctor. The next alternative incarnation of the Ninth Doctor is going to be a slightly controversial one. Rowan Atkinson was cast as the Ninth Doctor in the 1999 comic relief special The Curse of Fatal Death. This was bizarrely Stephen Moffat's first contribution to Doctor Who and was said to be an official continuation by Moffat himself. The episode sees the Ninth Doctor as portrayed by Rowan Atkinson face off the Master on Tercerus. During the events of the story, the Doctor is exterminated by the Daleks, then proceeds to regenerate into the Tenth Doctor as played by Richard E. Grant. Now, this is where things begin to get slightly complicated, now that Richard E. Grant has played both the Ninth and Tenth Doctor in separate timelines. This also throws up a question that there has never been a straight answer to. In the book The Tomorrow Window, the Eighth Doctor is shown his possible future incarnations, and as part of these visions, he is shown Richard E. Grant's incarnation of the Doctor. But this begs the question as to why the Eleventh Doctor did not recognise Dr. Simeon in The Snowmen. Perhaps he did recognise him but chose not to say anything. It's entirely possible for the Doctor to have based his face off of Dr. Simeon, now that we know he can do that. It is also possible to suggest that Dr. Simeon is, in fact, the Ninth Doctor who had crossed over from another timeline. The next selection of Doctors all stem from a BBC novel called The Tomorrow Window. Now, I mentioned this book earlier, but this is mainly where it comes into play. To cut a long story short, the Eighth Doctor looks into the Tomorrow Window, a mirror that allows you to see your own future, and the Doctor sees his possible ninth incarnations, those of which who match the descriptions of Richard E. Grant, Rowan Atkinson and Christopher Eccleston, along with descriptions of British comedians Alan Davies and Eddie Izzard. But another future incarnation is predicted to be one of the Four Elementals. The Four Elementals were the only four time worlds who survived the war in heaven. We're getting pretty deep into some complex novel lore here, but in short, one of the incarnations of the Doctor appears in the 2001 webcast Death Comes to Time, and was played by Stephen Fry. So the Seventh Doctor actually met this incarnation of the Ninth Doctor unknowingly. But it also brings us back to the same situation as Dr. Simeon. If the Eighth Doctor had seen this to be his future incarnation, then why didn't the Thirteenth Doctor recognise Stephen Fry's character in Spyfall? And once again, they very much could be the same person. The next theory is one that people may be quite sceptical of. After the confirmation of the Morbius Doctors in Series 12, many doors opened up for speculation. It's always been assumed that these incarnations came before the first Doctor, however it was also shown to the Doctor in the Tomorrow Window that his pre hartnell incarnations, first seen in the Brain of Morbius, were future incarnations, and the earliest Doctor shown, as played by Christopher Barry, was the Ninth Doctor, but in an alternative timeline. The next version of the Ninth Doctor is personally what I like to refer to as the Merlin Doctor. This incarnation was not only heavily referenced in expanded media, but was also discussed sparingly in the show itself. The whole premise of the season 26 story, Battlefield, revolves around this incarnation of the Doctor. This incarnation of the Doctor was also known as the Flying Dutchman, but more commonly went by the name of Moldwitch. At one point, he even encountered Tegan Javanka on his travels. Whilst visiting Daughter of Mine in the Mirror, she claimed that this was the final incarnation of the Doctor. He ended up becoming stranded on Earth in the year 16,909 in Africa. Keeping in the run of Final Doctors, here we encounter an alternative version of the Eighth Doctor, who for the sake of this video will be referred to as the Infinity Doctor. The Infinity Doctor is not explicitly the Ninth Incarnation, but is known to be in the Eighth Doctor's future. However, this incarnation resembles that of the Eighth Doctors, but with short hair and glasses. This version of the Doctor retired to Gallifrey and forgot most of his travels. After events on Gallifrey involving Omega, the Doctor's desire to travel began to grow once again. However, it is unknown what happened to the incarnation after this. Another Doctor very much in the same vein as Rowan Atkinson, we have the Mark Gattis Doctor. From another comedy sketch, this Doctor was played by long-term fan of the show and since writer Mark Gattis. This incarnation was never seriously interpreted as the Ninth Doctor, other than the press, but if you're following the same open parallel timelines as this video, then he does fit in. And now we come to the final incarnation, which is less of an incarnation and more of a Jackson Lake or Wormwood situation. After the Eighth Doctor defeated the Council of Eight by destroying their time station, a character called Sol changed its appearance to match that of the First Doctors and escaped with a woman called Zazan to 76 Totter's Yard. Sol then suffered amnesia and started to believe that he was the Doctor and Zazan was in fact Susan. He then left in his ship believing that he was the Doctor, therefore technically setting him in line to be the Ninth Doctor. And that's just about it. So it's pretty safe to say that there have been many alterations of the Ninth Doctor over the years, and these aren't even all of them. I tried to include as many as I could find, please do let me know if I missed any in the comments. And whilst you're there, I would really appreciate you subscribing. We're almost at 500 and it would mean the world to me if you could subscribe. Apologies for the lack of content on the channel recently, we have been quite slow, but things are coming. I would also like to say thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Goodbye. <laughs> Yeah!